Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the nerve supply of the stomach. The stomach is an internal organ, therefore, it should be innervated by the autonomic nervous system, by the sympathetic nerve, and by the parasympathetic nerve. So, first of all, we'll go to the sympathetic innervation the sympathetic innervation of the stomach these are derived from t5 to t10 segment of the spinal cord here the greater and lesser splanchnic nerves celiac and hepatic plexus the sympathetic nerve fiber travel along the arteries to supply the stomach along the artery means it is passing as on the surface of the artery as a periarteriolar plexus then it moves forward over the artery artery is acting as a conduit for the passage of the sympathetic nerve fibers over the tunic adventitia of the of the blood vessels so sympathetic nerve travel along the arteries to supply the stomach the sympathetic nerves are vasoconstrictor. They constrict the blood vessel and also they, they are vasoconstrictor to the gastric vasculature. They are also inhibitory to the gastric musculature. So they actually relax the gastric muscles. Motor to the pyloric sphincter. In the pyloric area, it tightens the pylorus and pyloric sphincter and brings about pyloric constriction there. Main pathway for pain sensation from the stomach, efferent impulses. So efferent impulses or sensory sensation, pain sensation from the stomach is carried by the sympathetic nerve fibers. We'll go to the parasympathetic innervation. The parasympathetic nerves are derived from the vagus nerve. We have two vagus nerve, left vagus nerve, right vagus nerve. They are coming from the medulla oblongata of the brain stem. So the vagus nerve forms esophageal plexus on the lower part of the esophagus and from the vagal trunk. The anterior vagal trunk is made up of one or two branches. Okay, so anterior vagal trunk is composed of one or two branches, or one or two trunk come out from the anterior aspect of the of the stomach uh, from the esophageal plexus. The anterior vagal trunk contains mostly the left vagus nerve fiber. But we must remember that although it is totally almost totally parasympathetic but it also receives some sympathetic nerve fibers from the from the splanchnic nerve and the sympathetic chain of ganglions so anterior vagal trunk contains mostly the left vagus nerve fibers posterior vagal trunk contain trunks contain mostly the right vagus nerve fiber Again, certainly we have some sympathetic nerve also contribute in the formation of the esophageal plexus. And esophageal plexus is present in the lower part of the esophagus. From the esophageal plexus, we'll get the anterior vagal trunk and posterior vagal trunk. We may have more than one anterior vagal trunk. We may have more than one posterior vagal trunk. Both the anterior and posterior vagal trunks are derived from the esophageal plexus. So this is the esophagus. Over the esophagus, we are seeing this white structure. This is the esophageal plexus. From the esophageal plexus, we get the anterior vagal trunk. We may have more than one anterior vagal trunk. On the posterior aspect, we'll get the posterior vagal trunk. Again, it may be multiple. They are going through the 
esophageal opening of the diaphragm that is at the level of the T10 thoracic vertebra. So along with the esophagus, this vagal trunk reaches the abdomen. Okay, so we got the formation of esophageal plexus by the left vagus nerve, by the right vagus nerve, and also contribution from the splanchnic nerve from the from the sympathetic chain of ganglion. But mostly these fibers are parasympathetic. Here we are looking at the sympathetic innervation. It is from the celiac ganglion that is getting contribution from the greater splanchnic nerve, root below T5 to T9, lesser splanchnic nerve, root below 9 to 10. Okay. So these are the preganglionic fiber. These are the postganglionic fiber. This is the celiac plexus here. From there, we'll get actually from here to here is the preganglionic fiber. Then there will be relay. Then we'll get the postganglionic fiber from the celiac ganglion here. And from here, we'll get innervation to multiple structure like stomach, the liver. So from here to here is the preganglionic fiber. From here to the organ is the postganglionic fiber. So celiac ganglion is getting contribution from the greater splanchnic nerve. Greater splanchnic nerve is getting contribution from T5 to T9 segment of spinal cord from the lateral gray horn of the spinal cord, T5, T9. For the lesser splanchnic nerve, it is coming out of the lateral gray horn of the T10, T11, okay. So we got the contribution from the greater and lesser splanchnic nerve. From going to the celiac ganglion, from celiac ganglion, we'll get innervation to the stomach and liver and other structures. Okay, so we got the, we got the esophageal plexus contributed by the left vagus nerve, the right vagus nerve. Okay, also from some sympathetic nerve fiber from the greater splanchnic nerve from the sympathetic chain of ganglion. Okay, so we will get the anterior vagal trunk here that will give rise to the uh, branches, the hepatic branch, and it will give the branch to the fundus of the stomach, to the body of the stomach, and it will give branch to the to the pylorus and the pyloric sphincter here. Okay, pylorus, we call it anterior nerve of letter jet. Here, posterior vagal trunk again has branches to the body and fundus of the stomach. This is the body of the stomach, this is the fundus of the stomach, as well as we get the posterior nerve of letter jet that innervates the pyloric antrum and pyloric sphincter. The vagal trunk go to the abdomen through the esophageal opening of the diaphragm. This is the D diaphragm. Okay. This is the gap, the esophageal opening, circular gap that is at the level of the T10 thoracic vertebra. The anterior vagal trunk, the anterior vagal nerve is divided into branches for the anterior surface of the fundus and body of the stomach. Two pyloric branches, one for the pyloric antrum, the initial part, and another for the pylorus, the junction between the duodenum and the stomach. The posterior vagal trunk divides into smaller gastric branches. For the posterior surface of the fundus of the fundus and the body of the pyloric antrum. Okay. And the body of the stomach and the pyloric antrum, larger celiac branches for the celiac plexus. Okay, so we'll read here: smaller gastric branches for the posterior surface of the fundus and the body of the stomach and the pyloric antrum. Functions of the parasympathetic nerves of the stomach. 
motor and secretomotor to the gastric mucosa and motor to the gastric musculature. Parasympathetic will increase the secretion, okay, and it also increases the motility, increase secretion, increase motility, responsible for coordinated relaxation of the pyloric sphincter during gastric emptying. We learn something about vagotomy that is commonly practiced in the surgery world. What is done? We have Trunkal vagotomy in that condition, hepatic branch cannot be protected in anterior, vagal, anterior trunkal vagotomy. In posterior trunkal vagotomy, celiac branch cannot be protected. Then we have the selective vagotomy, will cut a little lower here, so the hepatic branch, celiac branch is protected. Then highly selective will cut these branches that will supply the parietal cell we know that parietal cell secretes the hydrochloric acid and also the the high, also the intrinsic factor for the vitamin b12 okay so stomach referred pain pain from the stomach is poorly defined common with other structure of foregut origin we know that the for the forgot origin structures are the esophagus, stomach, duodenum up to the opening of the hepatopancreatic duct. Okay, refer to the epigastric region. Pain from the gastroesophageal junction involves innervation from the esophagus and is commonly referred to the back of the lower part of the sternum. So it is lower retrosternal pain. Okay, we have multiple images. We, I have picked up those images from multiple sources and the images from the Microsoft PowerPoint, information from multiple sources for teaching purpose only. So let us summarize. Now, the stomach, internal organ, it should be innervated by the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic, sympathetic coming from the T5 to T10 segment of spinal cord and via the greater and lesser splanchnic nerve through the ciliar ganglion would get the postganglionic fiber from the ciliar ganglion. The sympathetic, what it does, it tightens the sphincter but loosens the body and fundus of the stomach. Okay, it is vasoconstrictor. How about parasympathetic? That is secretomotor. Increases the secretion, increases the amount of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so that may sometimes cause peptic ulceration. So vagotomy is a management for peptic ulceration. That is the way to decrease the secretion. So if we are in highly selective vagotomy, we will not damage the nerve to the latter jet. If we cannot damage the nerve to the pylorus or pyloric antrum, nerve to the lateral jet, then we don't need the gastrogenostomy. We don't need another bypass surgery. Just selective vagotomy will control the peptic ulcer. Okay. So we got that. Then we'll have we also discussed the stomach referred pain. It is vague pain. There's no specific way. It may be in the in the epigastric region. It may be the pain from other organs, other part of the GI tract which are derived from the which are derived from the foregut, like the esophagus or the upper part of the first part and part of the second part of the duodenum. So pain may be in the epigastric region, may be in the lower retrosternal region. Okay, and that's all about my presentation on the not supply of the stomach. If you like my video, please support my channel. Please share the information with your friend. Any question, please feel free to ask me and please subscribe me. Have a nice day. Bye now.